Hello, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you are here. You can see I'm filming this at 6.30 at night. I have just finished making the very last slow cooker meal, and I am so excited for you guys to see this. Maybe I should make this into a series, all these cozy fall slow cooker meals. Mm, they are bringing life to me. So almost all of these were a win except for one. And I'm still going to be showing that one to you because I want you guys to know what to look out for or maybe how you can do it differently. I'm also going to be showing you how to make each of these into freezer meals, which is so, so, so important for stretching a budget. So important for being prepared for your family and just having things on hand makes your life a lot easier. Before we start into this video, you guys subscribe down below in case you're interested in these kinds of videos. Give it a thumbs up and all right, let's get into it. The very first meal that we're gonna be making today is a classic American chili, or at least that's what I would call it. Chili is one of our all-time favorite meals, especially Derek's, and this recipe is a total winner. So I'm gonna be using my own homemade chili seasoning, which will be linked in the bio below. All of these recipes will be linked down below, or at least what I can find. We're using some beef bouillon, some tomato paste, some organic tomato sauce, organic diced tomatoes, and some dark red kidney beans. Um, and then we're also going to be adding some of this ground turkey that I'm cooking up over here. And we're also going to be adding some onions to this ground turkey. So just like a chopped up onion. Um, and then you can see me putting it in right here, but just kind of sauteing that together until the onions have cooked down and become translucent. And then we're gonna be adding in a couple of tablespoons of some tomato paste. I honestly don't really measure very much, <laughs> if hardly ever, mainly only in baking when it really counts. Um, but I'm just scooping what I think would be good in there. And I am doubling the recipe so that I can freeze it. So whatever you see me doing here, make sure you know that it is doubled. Um, and then I'm just sauteing this tomato sauce so the flavor can really bloom with the ground turkey. Next, I'm gonna be adding everything into my crock pot, like everything. So the ground turkey, the tomato sauce, the diced tomatoes, all of that kind of good stuff. I'm adding my chili seasoning to the meat because you always wanna season from the base layer. So my base layer is my meat. I wanna make sure that's nice and seasoned and well combined before I add that into my chili. Then I'm adding in my meat here, which you can see. And you guys, good thing I did not decide to triple this recipe because um, I had zero room left. I'm also adding my drained and rinsed kidney beans here, which again, I doubled, which is why it literally becomes filled up to the top. And then I go ahead and give everything a mix, which I guess really isn't necessary with crock pot cooking, but for some reason, it looks weird to me not to mix it. So I go ahead and mix it. And then I turned my crock pot on high for this one, threw the lid on, and just a couple of hours later, it is completely done. I believe I cooked this for about three hours on high, but since everything is cooked, you just want the flair, flavors to marry together and have time to do that. Um, and then I actually got two freezer meals out of this, plus some leftovers we had already eaten that night. So that little Tupperware you see right there is leftovers. We ended up having that for lunch and it was so good. Leftover chili just gets better and better. And then I free, I freezed, froze, I froze two bags of the chili here. I always write what it is, the date, and then my directions on how to reheat. And then I just went ahead and threw this chili on a plate so that it'll lay flat. You could also do a baking sheet, but I don't have room for that. And then right into the freezer it goes. Super easy meal to pull out on a busy night. The next one that we are cooking is this beef and broccoli. This one actually turned out really, really well. Derek is not a really big fan of any kind of Asian food and he went back for seconds on this. So we're using some sesame oil, some better than bouillon beef base. We're also doing some minced garlic. Um, some coconut sugar, you could use regular granulated sugar or brown sugar in place of this. Some coconut aminos, which you can also do soy sauce. And then we are doing some, uh, what was this? It was like beef pot roast essentially. And then I, you could do like beef short rib as well, but I just sliced it up really thin myself and marinated it with some of that coconut aminos and some garlic and red pepper flake. Now I'm just mixing into my water some of the soy sauce, some of the coconut sugar, and I'm also gonna be doing some of the um, minced garlic as well. You don't have to do this beforehand, it was just kind of easier to mix and make sure that the sugar got all dissolved together. So I just went ahead and did this into my like little mixing cup here beforehand. I'm adding some sesame oil, make sure you go pretty light on this sesame oil and just do what the recipe says because you can really ruin a recipe with sesame oil. It's so strong. So now I'm just stirring to make sure that all this sugar is dissolved 
in here and that way we can get it laying over top of our beef really easily. I threw all our beef into the crock pot here, set it on low, make sure you turn your crock pot on. I can't tell you the amount of times I have forgotten to turn my crock pot on or plug it in. I'm pouring all of our sauce on top of the beef, putting the lid on and coming back. I think this was like, oh, three to four hours later, it'll tell you in the recipe as well. And I went ahead and took some of this broth from the beef and mixed it in with some cornstarch. This is going to be our thickener. So we're gonna thicken it like a regular old like beef and broccoli base, right? It's not super soupy. So I'm just mixing that together until it forms a nice liquidy type of paste. Like this right here is too thick. I ended up adding way more to this and you'll see as I pour it in, it's pretty liquidy. And then it'll kind of make it a little bit of a lighter color, that's totally fine. I stir it around through my crock pot, again, on low and put the lid on, let it cook for another 30 minutes so it thickened. And then I threw in some lightly like blanched um, broccoli just so it wasn't cooked all the way so it wouldn't overcook. I went ahead and mixed that together so that our broccoli can kind of soak up the sauce. And you guys, this was so good. I forgot to put some sesame seeds on top. You could also top with red pepper flakes if you want it a little spicier. So good. Um, the next one that we were making is actually one that was kind of a fail. This is cracked chicken or ranch chicken. Oh, this one, you guys, I think I know what went wrong. So let me tell you, we use this garden ranch packet. This one is a dairy-free one by Primal Palette. I get it on Thrive Market, which which is always linked down below for you guys, which is the same place that I get this taco seasoning. Um, no real added fillers that are bad for you or anything like that. You guys, if you are new here, we are gluten-free, dairy-free, and egg-free. So all of these recipes reflect that, especially in all of the seasonings that I use as well. We're also gonna be using some better than bouillon chicken paste and some chicken breasts here, just so it's easy to shred. This is going to go into like a taco-y type bowl. And I forgot to mention that we are also using a plant-based ranch dressing. This one is just a vegan one from Kroger. So then I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, throw my chicken breasts in there. These were thawed. You can also do frozen. Honestly, I've done both and it's fine. It just takes a little bit longer to cook, but not much. And then I'm going to throw in this taco seasoning. I had a leftover taco packet that I thought only had like a quarter left in it, it had a little more, <laughs> and I probably should not have done so much taco seasoning because it got pretty salty. Um, but then I added this dairy-free ranch packet, which I still have not nailed down how to use this quite yet. Cause it does taste a little bit different than regular ranch. Cause it doesn't have any milk added. I'm also going to be making a like chicken stock that's maybe just a little bit more flavor with that better than chicken or better than bouillon chicken paste. And I just did that with a little bit of warm water in that mixing cup. Threw that in to my crock pot, set it on, I believe I did low that day, but you could do low or high. And it comes out like this, beautiful, right? It's got that beautiful color on there with all that seasoning and Logan loves it. And at this point, the chicken was really, really good. Super tender. I think I cooked it for like two and a half hours, maybe even three hours. You'll just have to know depending on your crock pot how fast it cooks. Um, and Logan loved it this way. I think where I went wrong is the next few steps that I took. So I am going to be shredding this up with my little KitchenAid mixer right here. This is always my trick to doing chicken. However, you cannot over mix with this because then it kind of just turns your chicken into mush a little bit, like the pieces get too small. So I was having a hard time getting through the chicken here, which my pieces got a little bit too small. That was the first way I went wrong. Then I added in some ranch dressing. This was fine. However, it wasn't mixing up as much as I like. I think I overcooked my chicken a little bit, so it was a little bit drier um, and I should have use the liquid from the pot rather than ranch to help it like uh, be shredded up. So I should not have added more ranch after this because then I went in and added more ranch thinking that it was still too dry. I should have just left it how it was and poured it back into the broth and it would have been fine. Um, I think I just added too much, <laughs> too much ranch. And honestly, I usually am someone who says there's never too much ranch, but this was too much but we made the best of it. We threw away the leftovers and just ate it for dinner, <laughs> which I never throw away leftovers. So that should tell you it really was not good, but I just made it on top of this little taco bowl with a bunch of other toppings and we made do. The next one that I'm showing you is kind of a bonus meal. This really isn't a meal, but it is a gorgeous applesauce recipe and it, it could not be easier, you guys. I took about 25 to 30 of these golden delicious apples that we picked from a local farm, peeled them, and then you'll see that I cut them and core them as well. We're doing a half of a lemon that I found in the bottom of my fridge. I really could have used more, but that's all I had. We're also doing some cinnamon as well as some coconut sugar. Um, you could also not add sugar or you could add white sugar or you 
you could add uh, brown sugar. I was just trying to have this not necessarily spike our glycemic levels. So I am going to go ahead and peel my apples, which you'll see here. Honestly, you guys, cooking for me is a labor of love. I really enjoy cooking for my family and knowing exactly what goes into each thing that I make. I know that I'm providing them with the best ingredients um, and just what goes into our bodies. And it really is like a love language for me to feed people. So if you have a baby and I bring you over a meal, don't be surprised because that's just a way that I love to love my people. So I'm just peeling all of my apples here. I kept a bowl for um, already peeled apples and then a bowl for the peels and it made it super easy. I'm going ahead and coring them in my own special way, which is just cutting off the sides <laughs> essentially. Um, and some of these apples did end up going to Logan and Cole <laughs> as I was making them, but that's totally fine. So I think I cut up about 30 30 apples. It was a crazy amount. And you'll see here as I'm filling the crock pot, it fills up what seems like pretty quick. This took me about 25 minutes and it was so worth it. I'll never go back to store bought applesauce because this is so good. But this was definitely a labor of love. <laughs> um, it took me a little bit. So definitely want to do this when you have some time on your hands. But then I'm just squeezing in whatever I can of this lemon. I could have used a little more, like I said, but this really honestly was fine. Just giving it a little bit of acidity is going to cut that sugar so that's not too overly sweet, if you will. And then I'm going in with my coconut sugar, which I find coconut sugar isn't overly sweet either. So, um, you know, just go based on what the recipe says. But again, I did double this recipe. I'm throwing in a bunch of cinnamon, not according to the recipe. It does include cinnamon, but I just went with what I thought looked good. I threw it on high for about three to four hours. And you guys, when I tell you my house came out smelling like a potpourri bowl, it was incredible. I have never smelled my house smell so good from a natural fragrance. This clearly doesn't have any added fragrance, but I went ahead with my little KitchenAid mixer and mixed this all up, which I had to use my in my lid as a shield it got a little messy but you guys so dang good I froze about half of this and it is perfect I even used it in some pumpkin muffins the other day as an egg replacer one of my favorite recipes ever the next recipe that we are moving on to is a creamy white chicken chili. Now this is one that I absolutely loved. Um, Derek was not so sure because he doesn't love chicken thighs, which is what we're using here. We're also using a diced onion because we cannot use corn. Derek is very allergic to corn especially in its whole form, like when it's not baked in or anything. So I skipped it. Then I used two cans of green enchilada sauce, four cans of great Northern beans, about a half of this jar of green chilies, which you'll see was way too much in the end. And then some garlic and herb seasoning, super easy, pretty much a dump and go meal. Um, it's aside from, you know, just like trimming off the fat of the chicken thighs and you could easily use chicken breast in here or just rotisserie chicken, whatever you want to do. Um, but honestly, I really enjoyed the chicken thighs. Derek does not like the texture of chicken thighs, so he couldn't really get over it on that end, but he said the flavor was really great. So I'm pouring in two of these cans of green enchilada sauce from La Victoria. I could definitely make my own green enchilada sauce, or I could definitely just do canned and save myself some time. And as you'll see here, I went way too heavy on the green chilies. In person, it didn't seem like it was too much overboard, so I just kept it, but it ended up being too spicy in the end. And then I forgot to show you guys, Part of the ingredients is I'm going to be throwing in some softened Kite Hill cream cheese. This is just a dairy-free cream cheese that we love just to make it creamy. And then I'm also needing four cups of chicken stock, and I am doubling this recipe, so four cups is enough. And then a little bit of the Better Than Bouillon chicken base. This stuff comes in so handy, um, especially when you're doing crock pot meals to really gather that flavor. So I'm pouring in my chicken stock here, and I'm pouring in my drained and rinsed Great Northern beans, which I hate that they always get stuck to the bottom of the can. That's like the worst thing ever. <laughs> I'm stirring up my soup because you guys know I got to stir my crock pot, throwing on the lid and turning it on high because I just needed it by a certain time today, but low and slow is how I usually like to go. I'm checking it here with a meat thermometer to make sure all the pieces are done. And what I read online is with chicken thighs, the longer you let them go to about 195 degrees, um, the more tender they get. So I tried to go anywhere between 165 and 195 and it ended up around 175 to 180 and they were perfect, so tender. And then I went ahead again with my little trick and um, just, you know, shredded them up with my little KitchenAid mixer. If you actually have like a stand KitchenAid and you use just like the flat paddle, that's even better than what I have. And then we're going to dump the chicken right on back in. And you guys will see, I'm gonna show you exactly how I make this into a freezer meal. So 
dairy doesn't really freeze very well, much less uh, dairy-free type of dairy products. So I'm separating it into a bowl, what I think that we will not eat. And it ended up being perfect. I ended up getting two freezer bags out of this, which is awesome. So this entire thing made three meals for us. And there's about two and a half of us eating it. Myself, Derek, and then Logan eats about a half of what we eat as adults. And then to whatever I have left in the crock pot, I'm throwing in some of this softened cream cheese. You wanna make sure your cream cheese is softened and stir really well. I love the flavor cream cheese gives to these kinds of soups and stews, but unfortunately it does tend to get a little bit clumpy if you don't soften it enough, which I thought I had and I definitely didn't. That's okay with me. I don't mind a little bit of cream cheese here and there, but if you're looking for a really smooth one, make sure it is really softened beforehand. Then I'm just kind of mushing it around the sides to make sure that I am, you know, getting all that cream cheese incorporated and it is ready to go for our dinner. So you can see I'm serving Logan's here. He got about a scoop and then I'm serving Derek and I's as well. And this was such a good cozy, um, like typical fall meal, you guys. I love these cozy crock pot soups. So I had a little bit of forager cashew milk yogurt on mine, which is our dairy-free version of sour cream, and then some siete tortilla chips. So dang good. I still dream about this one. The other two I am throwing into these freezer bags, as you will see. I wrote out white chicken chili, the date that I made it, which was 11 7 21. And then I always write whatever I need. So I need some cream cheese before I make this. So when I pull it out of the freezer, I want to make sure I have cream cheese on hand. Then I always write the directions as simple as they may be. I usually tend to forget or I'm doing too many things. I just want to read it. So I write my directions of how to thaw um, and how to cook it right on there. So I'm I'm just cooking it in the slow cooker for about three hours and then adding softened cream cheese, just like you guys saw me do. And this is fully cooked, so it'll be super easy to reheat. We even got a Tupperware out of this, which was great after we ate everything. I threw my chili into two of these Ziploc bags. You guys can kind of gauge how much you need in your Ziploc bags, and I'm throwing it into the freezer. Easy freezer meals for another day. Um, this next one was actually super good as well. It was a honey sesame chicken. This one, Derek also went back for a second, so I'm starting to not believe that he doesn't like Asian type of meals. Um, we're doing chicken breast for this one, some tomato paste in a tube, which really came in handy some minced garlic, some of this Sky Valley sriracha sauce, which is just a healthier version of sriracha sauce, half honey, half um, soy sauce, which you guys will see exactly how much to do in the recipe. I will have it linked down below, of course. Some rice vinegar, and then we'll need some cornstarch right at the very end to, again, like thicken this sauce, kind of like how we did with the beef and broccoli. So I'm, this one is really a dump and go, thankfully, because I had a baby on my hip who really needed me, and I just kind of eyeballed everything to what I know that we like. As you get more comfortable in the kitchen and get better at cooking, especially if you're new you will kind of gauge like how much you guys like of garlic or tomato paste or whatever and you'll be able to go just based on your taste so I just poured everything in here um everything but the cornstarch is going in right now so I've got my chicken breast my minced garlic we have some sriracha um style sauce in there as well as my rice vinegar and now I'm just doing my squeezable tube of tomato paste which was so helpful because I had sis in the other arm and she was kind of panicking <laughs> or freaking out or whatever you want to call it in baby terms just needed her mama so I only had one hand to get this done which is exactly why I also love slow cooker meals because they cook while I'm doing anything else and they are so easy to throw together especially if you do dump and go ones kind of like this one is. Then I'm just stirring it all around and this one I would suggest stirring just because the sauce will not completely cover the chicken so you want that flavor to be everywhere. I'm setting it on low and slow. I did, I think I did it for about three to four hours and it came out so tender and amazing. Look at this. This was a fan favorite. I shared this with you guys on my Instagram and you guys died over it and you were like, please just send me the recipe early. <laughs> so I will have everything linked down below that I possibly can for you guys. I did this on a bed of brown rice with some um, sauteed zucchini and then some of the chicken with some sesame seeds and green onions on top. And it was chef's kiss. And then I had enough to freeze. Um, and with having leftovers, I had leftovers and enough to freeze, which is fabulous. So I just wrote out all my instructions on here like I like to do and threw this into the freezer and it'll be great on another night for us. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so glad that you loved it and made it to the end because clearly if you're here, you made it to the end. So drop me an emoji down below, maybe a turtle emoji or something like that, letting me know that you are the true MVP for making it to the end. Hope you guys find some value in this and you can feed your families um, with lots of love and just making it quick and easy on yourself so way less stress. All right, see you next time.